My name is Mike Caprio. I'm with uh, Startup Bus. And my name is Alice. I'm with the New York Technology Council. And we'd like to welcome you to our fourth annual uh, Space Apps NYC Hackathon and inaugural conference and festival. Uh, so you all know we're, we're running a bit late, uh, so we're going to forego some of the uh, talk about us being the organizers and all that stuff. We're going to immediately go to Deborah Diaz and Ellen Stofan, the chief technology officer and chief scientist of NASA. Uh, unfortunately, Ellen has to leave, uh, so we're going to let them do their uh, kind of opening ribbon-cutting remarks first, and then we will continue from there. Back to you. I'm going to start with Ellen first, and okay. she's our colleague that does have to leave. So I'm Ellen Stofan, I'm the chief scientist of NASA. I'm actually a planetary scientist. I study volcanoes around the solar system. But as chief scientist of NASA, I get to sort of dabble in all the cool science that we do at NASA, from uh, all the work that we do with our six astronauts every day up on the International Space Station, learning about the effects of microgravity on human health. It turns out a lot of the things that happen to you up there, bone density loss, muscle wasting, are things that happen to us as we age here on Earth. So that when we're developing uh, ways for the astronauts to mitigate those effects, we're actually learning things that can help us here on Earth. We have our own study of our favorite planet, the Earth. Um, obviously, the Earth is changing. Climate change is a huge concern for the future. So how can we take all that NASA data that we gather? We have 19 satellites right now in orbit around the Earth, measuring everything we can measure, trying to document what's happening on our changing planet. Huge amounts of data, all publicly available on the Internet. We're on a journey to Mars, that work we're doing on the International Space Station to get astronauts ready to go to Mars. Uh, we're developing a new rocket called the Space Launch System. We need all kinds of technology to figure out from how do we 3D print new parts for a mission to Mars, how do we get the robotic tools we need to go to Mars, all these things we're doing. Okay, all those things I just talked about, we're just NASA. We're working with all the space agencies of the world, but even that, frankly, I don't think is good enough. And that's why we're here this weekend, and that's why we're so excited to be here. We're so grateful for Microsoft hosting us here today, because we need to harness the power of everybody to help NASA. We need you all to become, for this weekend, our, our people, our, our citizen science, our crowdsource, to take our data and get it into the hands of everybody. Make our data more useful. Help us on the journey to Mars. Help us utilize uh, what the astronauts are doing to help people here on Earth. Help us figure out cool things, like how would we use lava tubes, maybe to have astronauts live on Mars to protect them from the radiation that comes into the surface on Mars? How can we take our Earth science data and help do clean water mapping or help do crop alerts to make our data more useful for farmers? It's time to take that NASA data out of the hands of the scientific community, and I'm a scientist, so I'm saying this with all good intentions, out of the hands of the scientific community and put that data in the hands of everybody for the betterment of people here on Earth. So everything that you guys are doing here today, which we really call citizen science, how do we take everybody and get them involved in what they do and help us move together, not just as the US, but as we know from our 136 cities around the globe participating today, how do we harness the power of the whole globe to help move us forward? And you guys are a critical part of that. We're stronger together than we are individually, and we need everybody on board, and I'm so glad no offense, guys, but I'm so glad to see so many women here today because if we don't harness, <laughs> if we don't harness the power of everybody, how are we going to get people down onto the surface of Mars? How are we going to solve climate change? How are we going to tackle these really tough problems that we have in front of us if only 50% of the population is helping? So anyway, I'm so glad to hear you all, get, you, see you guys here today. You're going to do great things this weekend, and we're going to come out of this with some amazing new apps. So thank you. And I'm sorry, I have to run. So thank you so much, Ellen. And now we're going to ask one of our astronauts, Katie Coleman. We're going to do a little swapping of places. <laughs> So thank you so much. I'm thrilled and would like to welcome all of you to our International Space Apps Challenge 2015. Since 2012, Space Apps has become the world's largest hackathon, engaging thousands of citizens around the globe, working with NASA in designing innovative solutions into challenges across the globe to work using our open source data. 
We've grown from 25 locations in our first year to over 136 global locations. Woohoo! That's huge. That's huge. And we have over 10,000 participants and another 1,000 virtual. So just imagine across the entire globe, this activity is going on for the next 76 hours. So during that period, uh, people will create new solutions to address a broad range of 35 challenges, such as designing wearable technologies for astronauts, building our own drones, turning many of NASA's breathtaking imagery into art, or mapping clean water. There's a wide variety of activities that you can work on. Over the, those 35 challenges are aligned along uh, NASA's mission, and those themes are Earth, outer space, humans, and robotics. The challenges will tap the creativity of people from around the world to solve problems together. NASA is thrilled to have global teams of technologists, scientists, designers, different genders, entrepreneurs, designers. Everybody is welcome to participate. Um, in years past, we've had a number of families participate as well, a lot of youth activities at many of the locations. Um, uh, this year, we've actually created a women in data boot camp that happened yesterday. Uh, and that was to lower the barrier of entry to newcomers to the hackathon experience. And many of them are in the audience today. <coughs> After the Space Apps Weekend, we'll debut a new program to help support women in the data science field. It's going to be called Data Not Core. And I look forward to providing more information about this program over the next few weeks. We have some new products developed with the hackathon community in mind. Uh, we've really tried to improve uh, what's been done in the, the prior three years. We've provided 16,000 new data sets and over 40 APIs. This helps developers avoid large downloads in varying API formats. The APIs increase the discoverability and the searchability. We heard you loud and clear last year that you needed a developer's toolkit and are now providing API management of developer keys, rate limiting, and caching, and it's now all available through data.nasa.gov. We have a number of very talented folks here in New York for questions, and we also have uh, expertise that we can develop through a Google Hangout or online. Uh, and we have our chief scientists, who you just heard from. Uh, we have our astronauts, who you'll hear from shortly. Uh, other technical staff, such as Jason Dooley, who did a lot of the work on the APIs, uh, uh, Dan Hammer uh, is reachable as well, Beth Beck and Gladys Henderson. Uh, we also have uh, several other folks uh, working with us uh, with the press. Uh, most of all, what I do want to th thank is our hosts, the sponsors, and mostly all of you for volunteering over a weekend for this hackathon. I look forward to seeing what innovative solutions you're going to create. It's just been amazing the kind of work that's been done through citizen science, and I really am excited about this year. Thank you. Now I'll turn it over to our glorious astronaut, Katie Coleman. I don't know about glorious. <laughs> but you know, I'll, I'll pick it up from where Deborah left off, talking about all the amazing results that have already come from hackathons like this, from people saying, well, you know, I have this idea, and I may not be able to do everything myself, but joining together with a team and making something happen. And, and the value of looking at things from a different way. We had a uh, challenge to invent a new way to do spacesuit gloves where we needed a certain dexterity, and, and the ones we have are really bulky. And I think that the person who actually won was a costume designer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, there's, there's a lot of different viewpoints to bring. And you know, as an astronaut, I'm kind of down in the, down in the trenches and you know, doing the work that a lot of other people are designing, and then other people are taking that data that we collect on our missions or satellites or telescopes that we enable to space. Be other people are taking that data and doing something with it, and that is you. And what I'd like, so I like to emphasize what it's like to really be in the trenches and to be one of those people because that's what you are today. You know, you're on a team. Not yet, but you will be, right? Uh, you're on a mission. Certainly, you're on a mission. We have 35 challenges. They're challenging. 
and they're not there because we wanted to make stuff up. It's because we, as, as uh, Ellen was saying, we can't do this alone as NASA. And so I challenge you when you're picking your teams, when you're doing your projects, really try to let people surprise you. I mean, we don't get to pick our spaceflight teams. And actually, for my, uh, to, uh, something I'm really excited about today is Ron Guerin will be here today. I think he's been here before in New York. It's actually my first uh, Space Apps Challenge. But Ron and I flew in space together on uh, Expedition 27. And there's just something special about that that you can never take away. So we're always glad to see each other. And it'll be neat to have us here. Um, we'll try to work in a phone call with our Italian crewmate, Paolo. We'll see. Anyways, um, but we don't get to pick those things. And, you know, I, I don't know that Ron and I thought, you know, we're really going to be glad we spent a few months together in a small place. And so, but, it, but there's a bond that develops, but also, you know, basically, you really can't know people, and, and you have to let them surprise you. And people look at me, and several people have stopped me, and they want to take pictures and things like that, because I have this uniform. I have this label. And it says to you, she has that job, she must be somebody. But realize that in this room, everybody is somebody. There are lots of somebodies. Which one of you may be one of the ones to walk on Mars or to develop the software or the hardware that helps us have the environmental control system that would enable us to actually take an important step on the way to Mars? I mean, there's a reason we're not on Mars yet, and that's because we have a lot of work to do, and it's not done yet, and they're actually, they're, incremental steps that are logical. Um, a good environmental system that doesn't break all the time. On the space station, ours breaks quite a bit. It's not because people were not talented designers. It's because we're learning about the microgravity environment. And we need to learn those things before we're ready to go further. I mean, there's Earth, there's low Earth orbit, there's the moon, asteroids, and then Mars is, you know, in the next building, it's really far away. So there's things that we need, things that we need to develop. And when you're looking around and you're choosing these teams, I'll just give you a, I'll give you a team choosing uh, experience from my own background, which is when I was a freshman or sophomore in college at MIT. I was a chemistry major, big lab course, 12 to five, Monday through Thursday, Friday's optional, <laughs> right, right? <laughs> And 12 of us, you knew you needed a really good lab partner. And there was this one woman in the group, and tall, blonde, beautiful, kind of California-like. And I just thought, nah, you know, <laughs> nah. And apparently she looked over at me and she thought, you know, nobody that cute could do chemistry. <laughs> so we were not lab partners with each other, although we basically gravitated towards each other very soon and worked together for the next three years. She's a MacArthur Fellow. She's a world famous, amazing chemistry professor at the University of Wisconsin. And I have a pretty cool day job. And we, we were wrong. You really, it's, I think it's actually one of the most important things you can do here today is you know, look for the people that don't, are, you know, are kind of standing there but don't know how to say, I think maybe I should be on your team. They're, they're out there, they're here. It's gonna be a really exciting day. I think on the schedule, we had a thing that said there would be autographs um, at 11. And in, in past times, it's just turned out to be inconvenient for you to be standing in lines when you should be teaming and working and all those kinds of things. I am gonna be here all weekend until the prizes are given out. I am judging, just so you know. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'm here all weekend. I am going to be going around to all the different groups. I will sign anything. I will take any pictures. So we're just going to do it that way without having it be some formal kind of thing. And uh, there's lots of time to make it happen. I'm really excited about being here today. I'm going to learn lots and lots of things. And I'm very excited about what you are bringing to NASA. And I thank you. Yeah, thank you, Katie. We're so grateful to have you here. Uh, I'd like to now welcome our Microsoft, uh, represents our, our intergalactic sponsor, Microsoft, uh, Matt Thompson. Uh, come on up to the stage. And Teresa, you come up too. I'd like to, I'd like to also introduce everybody to, to Teresa. Come on up. <laughs> Teresa has worked with us from the beginning uh, to get us here in the space, and she's done such a fantastic job, so I just want to say a thank you to her real quick. Um, so yeah, if you guys uh, just want to. 
Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand. So I am an evangelist for Microsoft. I run the, the evangelism organization across the U.S. I'm only going to take a couple of minutes. But I can't sit. So scientists can sit and talk. Like, I have to walk and talk. Otherwise, I just, it doesn't work. So the first thing I want to say is welcome. Welcome. Hey, good morning. So, yeah, so, so we, run, we run about 50 hackathons a year. Um, I was at UCLA last weekend, Poly Pavilion, 10 national banners hanging over my head, talking to students about why hack. And I can tell you the very first thing is you need energy. You guys know that. So I know you guys, this is the lull before the storm. You guys will be fully energized because uh, there's a lot of work left to do, right? Um, but so I'm just going to take one minute to talk about why we do this. I'm not talking about Microsoft. I'm talking about you. So the thing that's interesting is I have a background in computer science. I actually wrote the first C++ compiler for Sun Microsystems 20 years ago. One of the interesting things was that we had two builds a day, okay? We did a build during lunch. We did a build at night. You left for lunch, came back an hour and a half later, and the system might be built for you to test. And if somebody broke the build, then you spent part of your afternoon fixing it. Then we did a system build at night. That's how fast software moved 20 years ago. Like, you couldn't hold a hackathon if that was the case, right? And many, I talked to, I talked to students, I gave, gave this story to the, the students at UCLA, and they were like, uh, really? That's how the world worked? God, how did you survive, right? So the thing is that hackathons have emerged as a way of sharing, building on the shoulders of others, democratization of data, and a deep desire to make the world a better place. That's why you guys are all here. You guys know that. That's why we're here too. So we sponsor these things across the country, not just for NASA, but a lot of student ones. We did our first middle school hackathon earlier this year. Happened to be at my kid's school, so I had personally motivated to do that. Um, but having 12-year-olds you know, hack with real data was amazing, the kind of things they came up with, the views of the world that they, they came forward with. So, we're here because we fundamentally believe in that hacker ethos. I hope it's why you're here as well. The fact that you guys have some amazing people to work with already is fantastic. I just want to point out anybody wearing the Space Cat shirt works on my team, and they're here to help as well. We brought some of our, our best technologists along here as well. So please, if you, have, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we've got a number of things here for you to help make this fun. So we have a space photo booth. Go try check that out. We also have a very interesting game that one of our evangelists built that is, is it's fun to play, but what we really want to do is show you what computer vision could be like. So it's using a Kinect to, to model things. So really would like you guys to go check that out. If you're interested in computer vision, it's a great thing to go check out. Um, in the hack space, we have a bunch of loaner devices. If you're interested in testing out on different devices, whether it be mobile devices, tablets, et cetera, come check that out as well. And then the last one, which I want to make sure I get right, we're tweeting today, and it's, it's what is it? Yep. Um, follow um, MSST startup. That's right. And also, was it M Microsoft NY? Microsoft yeah. NY. Yeah, that's right. So the last thing I just wanted to say then, um, I, I live in Silicon Valley. I came out here yesterday just for this. I'm getting back on a plane going home tonight. Um, I actually get an opportunity to work with a lot of startups in, in Silicon Valley. And one of the things that we got to do just, uh, just a couple weeks ago was give Elon Musk a, an award. Not through my Microsoft work, but through a nonprofit that I work with. And one of the things that he did is he got up and spoke very eloquently for about 25 minutes on a bunch of different ideas. But I just want to leave you with a quote. And it was a very simple quote. It was, we have to get off the damn planet. It's literally how he finished his talk. <laughs> so even if you don't agree with the fact that he thinks we do have to get off the planet, what this is about is the ability for us to do so. And what NASA's come forward and said is that it's up to us as citizen scientists to be part of that solution. I hope you help solve some of those problems this weekend. Thank you guys very much. All right, I'll make this quick because I know that everyone's really dying to hack. Um, I'm told I have three minutes. I want to compress it to one. Um, by day, I lead what we do with startups in New York, um, which means I have the great privilege of finding the magic that everybody makes. It's the best job, and to be here, um, it's such an honor to see the magic that you make. Now, by night, undercover, I'm also a mom, and my kids are coming this afternoon, and I can't wait to have them see uh, what you're all doing. Um, right now, though, um, I have an, a call to action for all of you, and this is like the final uh, little bit of my minute. Um, the, the Skype in the classroom people actually asked me to come up. They were dying to get involved in space apps as well. Um, 
they are all about connecting people from across the planet so they can do things and think things and see things they otherwise couldn't. Um, it also means that they are very intent on helping to pay it forward. So um, they have a program that is um, launching in September um, called Uplift with Skype in the Classroom. Sorry that I was supposed to have the slide supposed to, no, whatever, technical problems. Um, I want to use my last 30 seconds for this call to action. What they're doing is organizing fabulous people like you to do Skype sessions with students to show, like, tell them what you do and you know, help them understand um, the really, really important work that you do. So it's, it's actually a very crisp and clean kind of time commitment. It's like two a month for 20 minutes. Um, we were at TED a few weeks ago and a whole bunch of TED speakers signed up and we can't think of who better and who more inspirational than people in this room who are making amazing stuff. So the call to action is this. Pull out your phone, I know you have one, and text um, Skype ITC to 41411, okay? So 41411, if you want to be a Skype guest speaker to sign up for the program, I'll say it again, 41411, and put in the words Skype ITC in the classroom, Skype in the classroom. And they'll shoot you over a form so you can sign up, but really think about doing it. What I understand is that it's certainly amazing for the students, but it's as amazing for you. It's really um, helps us remember why we do this. So that's it. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, by the way, I also want to mention um, Skype very graciously will be paying for dinner tonight. So there are dinner sponsors. So <laughs> please remember <laughs> when, you're, when you're having delicious, delicious uh, burger bar hamburgers tonight, you can thank Skype for that. Uh, so the next thing I would like to do is uh, actually welcome uh, the rest of our fantastic sponsors up to the, uh, up to the stage to just have a few words. Uh, we'll start with interstellar sponsor IBM. Uh, come right up to the stage. Uh, Bruce Weed from IBM will be giving a few remarks. Hello everybody. I'd like to welcome you here today and thank you all for coming. We're excited to be here. This is what we're all about. I'm responsible for New York City business development for developers and entrepreneurs. So this is what I focus on, working with guys like you to take code and develop it and hopefully launch your own company. Very important today what we're trying to do, right? We're really trying to figure out how do we innovate. Innovation is the key to today's success. In order to help you innovate better, what we've done is we've provided some tools for you to be able to do that. One of the tools that you can leverage is a tool called Bluemix. Bluemix is our cloud platform for development. We offer many t different types of data services and things that you can access. As an example, just to put it in perspective, you could take some of our Internet of Things, work with that particular data service, and work to focus on the robotics and the sensors, collecting sensor data in and analyzing that. Now, to make it even easier for you, we have actually have a white paper that's available online. It's a PDF file. And it actually breaks down each of the NASA challenges and then focuses within those challenges what are the different types of services you could use to solve that challenge. So how do you get access to this information? You go to ibm.biz forward slash space apps 215. So if you have your cell phones, you can take them out, go to that website, and you will find that PDF file that you can access. In addition to that, we will be giving away top three prizes to the teams that really innovate using Bluemix. Those prizes will be awarded on April 15th. An easy day to remember, that's, that's tax day, right? All your taxes have to be in if you're earning income. But really, I just want to encourage you guys, you know, look around. If you need help, we've got folks like Frank in the back of the room. He has a shirt on that says, commit, deploy, scale, and repeat. Uh, we also have a guy that's walking around. He looks like a mad scientist type of dude. He's wearing a white lab coat with white glasses. You've probably seen him. If you haven't, you will see him today. And we also have the mission control room downstairs on the fifth floor. Please ask for help. One of the things I've noticed when working with entrepreneurs, sometimes they want to do it all themselves. They're like, well, you know, I'll figure it out. Ask for help, right? Don't be one of these, and I'll, I'll 
pick on guys for a minute, right? Guys will sit there, they'll be driving along, and they won't ask for directions, right? Women have no problem doing that. Ask for directions. If you don't know where you're going, you need help, yell. And that's really it. I just want you guys to have fun, encourage you, be creative, be thoughtful, and work together as teams. This is really a, a great event, and I thank NASA for taking the leadership and really driving this event and sponsoring it. Good luck, everybody. And next, we have Interstellar sponsor, Socrata. Hello, everyone. My name, hi. My name is Christian Hugerheide. I'm with Socrata, and we have been working with NASA to relaunch data.nasa.gov, which is NASA's publicly available growing catalog of APIs and data sets and visualizations, so I encourage everyone to use it this weekend. And I just want to say two quick things. Number one is there's a bunch of Socrata folks here, like myself, and a couple people up here and downstairs on the fifth floor. We're going to be walking around observing what you guys are doing and hopefully helping you with the site and assisting you on the APIs, but we are going to be awarding something called the Open Data Award tomorrow. The only requirement is that you have to use data from data.nasa.gov. So I encourage everyone to check out the site and to use it, and you'll be eligible for the award. The second thing is, um, many of us have been to a lot of hackathons before, and you know that this is true. It's very easy to get lost in your computer screen, and very easy to get lost in what you're building with your own team, and that's about it. But I just want to encourage everyone to look up from your computer screen and to say hi to the people around you, to make some new friends and make connections from everyone here because there's a lot of really cool people and you'll have a lot more fun. So thank you all and thanks to the NASA and Space Apps Challenge teams. That's all I have. Thank you, Christian. Next up, we have Supernova sponsor, Touch Lab, uh, CEO Kevin Galligan. Hi, everybody. Uh, I think my title changes periodically, presidency, CEO, person. Uh, I got in late from speaking in Montreal last night, so I just wrote my notes. I'll be really fast. Uh, yeah, Touch Lab, we make Android apps. Um, I don't really have much to say other than uh, I think this is a great event. It's really inspiring to, um, I think, new programmers to get into doing software development for people who have been doing it for years, like myself. I've been programming since I was seven. Um, it's like a reminder of why we like to do it. So I think it's fantastic. Um, let's see. I think it's our third year and we don't really have an API. We just sponsor to like, you know, say, hey, this is great and I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's really progressed a lot. I want to have everyone like clap for the team putting it together. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and just guess. Uh, there are a lot of hackathons out there. I mean, like too many now, but this is one where you actually get to do something that's useful, potentially, so I think that's awesome. Uh, if you know anything mobile related, I'll be wandering around periodically, so pull me aside, um, you know, especially Android. And if uh, you are or eventually become an Android developer, we're always hiring, so get in touch. That's it. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. I'll pass it off. Oh. Next up, we have Supernova sponsor Twilio. Uh, evangelist Ricky Robinette. What's up, Space Apps? I'm going to plug in real quick. So, I don't know, Mike, you got some good banter? So, uh, I'm going to give Startup Bus a quick plug if, uh, if that's going to happen. So, uh, Kevin Galligan, Startup Bus member, Ricky Robinette, Startup Bus member, myself, Startup Bus member, Alice Ng, co organizer of Space Apps, NYC, Startup Bus member. Uh, Startup Bus uh, is a wonderful organization. We are a 1,000 member alumni. Uh, group worldwide. Uh, we take a road trip from origin cities across uh, countries and in 72 hours create startups. Uh, so from start to finish, uh, a complete startup from scratch. Um, I probably should be on the actual camera. <laughs> Hello. Um, yes, and uh, we've been going now for five years. This year we'll actually be in Nashville. Uh, actually, Ricky, you're, you're the national director of Startup Bus. My goodness. <laughs> How's that for banter? Um, so yeah, uh, Startup Bus has provided a lot of great support for this organization uh, for Space Apps NYC over the years. Uh, New York Tech Council has been a fantastic partner as well. Um, what else can I say? How are we doing? You all good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, yeah. we're good to go. Uh, Twilio. And thanks for the plug, Mike. Uh, one last Startup Bus thing before I go. Uh, 
This year's startup bus is invite only, so you have to get a member of the community to vouch for you to be able to ride. Uh, but we thought that everyone at Space Apps is obviously awesome, um, so you automatically get an invite to ride startup bus if you come find me. So uh, come find me. That's the end of my startup bus plug. Twilio, uh, I am Ricky Robinette from Twilio. Twilio makes it easy for developers to write code that sends and receives text messages and makes and receives phone calls. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how it works real quick. Uh, this is an audience participation uh, part of the show. So if you can all get out your cell phones and turn the ringer all the way up. I know this is not something you normally hear in a presentation. Uh, and, and please, at the end of this presentation, turn them all the way down. Uh, but for now, turn them all the way up. Once you've done that, send a text message with any content you want to 718-215-0843. That is 718-215-0843. Anything you want to 718-215-0843. Zero eight four three, uh, and the code that is going to handle the response you get is this code right here. It is just a handful of lines. I am just giving you my contact info, and I am sending you the uh, the NASA pick of the day uh, because that's pretty awesome. Uh, but not only can you respond to inbound messages in Twilio, uh, you can also do things outbound without people uh, triggering it. So what I'm gonna do now is call everyone in the room that texted in, uh, and I'm gonna play the Brooklyn Nets chant because if you can't tell, I live in Brooklyn. Woo! Oh, what's up, Brooklyn? Uh, so we should start hearing phones ring right now. Feel free to put them on speaker. Uh, this is what Twilio does. If you wanna see how I built this, there is an API demo going on uh, right after all this wraps up downstairs. Uh, we're gonna live code this entire app together in 10 minutes, so thanks a lot. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Okay, thank you, Ricky. Okay, uh, next Supernova sponsor, Intel Mashery. Hey, hello, Space Apps. Uh, my name is Y Lun, and let me see. Is that coming? All right, we're back. Hi. Right, so my name is Y Lun. I work for Intel. Um, I'm a technical evangelist. So uh, what I do is I go to a lot of hackathons like this one, and you know, I work with students and people in the industry to build awesome projects that solves world problems. Um, what we've brought here this weekend is the Intel Edison. It's a little hardware platform that you guys can use to uh, build your projects with. Um, we also have a ton of sensors for like temperature, light, we have servos, we have LCDs. So any sort of um, projects that you have in mind, uh, come to us and we'll help you build it. Um, so what can you do with the Intel Edison, right? You can build wearables, wearable technology, so space club. <laughs> uh, robotics. Um, so this has a lot of PWM outputs, so you can control a set of motors, like this little rover here that uh, a project team has built. You can build chickens. Actually, that's a chicken farm. Um, so it monitors their temperature and optimizes um, the environment for chickens. And you can also make cheese with the Intel Edison. So like food is a, a problem, like feeding people is a good problem to solve. So think about that, and that might be a project you can build this weekend. There is also a uh, Best Use of Intel Technology Award. So um, if you build something awesome with our platform, then uh, you could win something. You can come talk to me about it. And thanks. So uh, if you want the hardware platform, um, come talk to me uh, during the workshop, and I'll be giving those out during then. Thank you. Next up, Supernova sponsored Double Dutch, Casper Jepsen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here from uh, Double Dutch, and we're a small startup out in California. We do event apps, and we did the app for this one. So 
I would love for everyone to uh, really get into the activity feed this weekend, post everything you're doing, post questions for other people. It's a great way to get in contact with the other people who are doing the hackathon. Um, like I said, we're a startup, so we basically do a full year hackathon. Every single day is a burnout hackathon. We try to not burn ourselves fully out, but it's about that getting passionate about technology, and that's one of the reasons we're really excited to be here. I'm really excited to meet all of you. And also, we're of course also hiring, so anyone who wants to do Android iOS apps or for web stack, come talk to us. Thanks. Next up, Supernova sponsor SparkPost with Benjamin Dean. Hi, I'm Benjamin Dean. I'm the principal developer advocate with Method Systems. Uh, actually, SparkPost is our product. So 15 years of experience, sending over 12 billion emails a day. That's what Message Systems has done for Twitter, LinkedIn, Groupon, all the rest of the big companies out there. Uh, next week, we're gonna be launching GA version of SparkPost. So it's been in private beta. We're gonna get it to all you guys. What it does is make, make it so easy to send email at any scale, either transactional or bulk, transactional or bulk email. Uh, and we wanna be able to let you guys put that kind of power in your app because ultimately email is king. Uh, you, can't get, you can't get a Twitter handle without it. You can't get a Facebook account without an email. Twitter is, or, or email is still the way to go for any kind of communication forward. Uh, we've got a lot of use cases. If you guys wanna take a peek at it, Adrian Howard's gonna be up there with me and we'll be able to help you guys out. We'll be scoring around the crowd and uh, love to be able to see you guys have some fun. It's so awesome to watch all these people who are so excited. Where's Tiffany at? I know she's here. Where is Tiffany at? She was here at like five in the morning. She was, th th this girl is dedicated. She is totally awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and next we have About.com, Supernova sponsor, represented by our superstar space hacker, winner two years in a row of Space Apps NYC, Jonathan Roberts. Hi guys, it's great to see so many people here. Um, space Apps is an amazing event. Uh, it was actually my first ever hackathon, uh, and the reason that I'm at About. Um, I met Mike at Space Apps a couple of years ago, and that is one of the reasons that about.com now has a thriving data science team. So, and we also hire a bunch of physicists. Uh, we now have a whole bunch of PhD uh, astrophysicists working at about.com on media problems. Um, surprisingly, not as bizarre as you would expect. Um, but just to say, yeah, meet people here, have a good time, but also note that a lot of people here are looking for people with your skill sets. Use this as a good way to get to know other people and just try new things, right? Try new skills you wouldn't normally try in your job, try to learn new things and you'll find people who will teach you, help you, um, show you how to do things you've never seen before. Uh, and then they might help you find an entirely new job in the city. This is a very special group of people, the kind of people who come out on the weekend to give up a weekend to hack on projects for NASA with no monetary prize at the end of the day is a very interesting group of people. So it is absolutely worth sitting down, looking around you, talking to the people around you and getting to know them. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, okay, so we only have a few more um, quick remarks that we're gonna do. Um, Alice is just coming up to the stage behind me now. Um, one thing I do wanna say real quick is, uh, again, I'm gonna reiterate, our intergalactic sponsor, Microsoft, has some amazing stuff uh, here to check out on the floor. After we wrap this up, we're gonna give you guys some free time just to kind of wander around the floor and check stuff out. So check out their photo booth, check out their um, space game display, uh, check out their device lab if there's something, you know, maybe get inspired to use one of their uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, and also they wanted us to mention that um, they are awarding best Microsoft hack. Um, if you recall, we sent out that notification in the API guide. Actually, all of our sponsors are listed on there. Um, so uh, they just wanted to let you all know that there will be something uh, added on to those that win the, uh, the best Microsoft hack. You know, we don't like to say prizes here because we're not about competition, you know, here at the app, uh, here at the Space Apps Challenge. Um, you know, we're here to, to, to do social good and, and solve problems for, to improve life on Earth and in space. But there is something cool that you will get. <laughs> okay, uh, so. So there are a few things that you should know for this weekend. Um, one of them is that 
You should have received a pink wristband or a VIP badge. Um, you'll need to keep that on you for the entire weekend. It gives you access to both the hacking floor and the public floor. Um, it also gives you access to the overnight space, uh, which we will share with you a little bit later. Um, lunch will be served around 12.30. Um, make sure you have your wristband. It's probably closer to 1 p.m. actually. Closer so, uh, so API demos are gonna happen starting around noon. So you basically have not from now until 11.45, um, you know, you get the exhibits all to yourself before we open up to the public. So check stuff out now. Um, you're, uh, like Alice said, you're able to move freely bef between the two floors, but we really, you know, you're here to, to do the hackathon. We're here to work with NASA. Um, so if we just, we just ask you to spend the majority of your time, you know, working on a hack, working on a challenge. But if there's a talk that you really, really want to see, it's okay to come up here to, to, to see it. Um, we don't want people using the live stream. So like, please don't use the live, like don't view the live stream to use your bandwidth. Uh, here, because you're, you're here, <laughs> so, you know, just come, come on upstairs and check it out. Um, but, you know, check your mobile app, check the schedule. If you see, if you see a talk that you really want to see, you can mark it on there in Double Dutch. Um, and... Uh, Mike and I will be here for the entire festival. If you need help, come find us. You should also know Jean Brooks. She's our amazing operations director. If you have any questions, please find her as well. Jean, uh, <laughs> we love you. Gene has done a, a fantastic amount of work for us, and we, we really appreciate it. Um, and also, I'm going to give a shout out to our live stream team: uh, Sean Persevilla, <laughs> Nikki Brovold, Jolie McPhee. Jolie McPhee with the Internet Society of New York. Fantastic job these guys did. They did a great job at the boot camp yesterday. If you guys didn't see that, check it out afterwards. Uh, amazing inspirational speakers all across the board all day yesterday for, from Civic Hall. Um, okay, so so lunch lunch will be around one ish. Use that time uh, when when you're at lunch, like gar grabbing food and stuff. If you haven't met anyone yet, um, what we'll do is in the open hack area downstairs, we'll designate each of the corners as like a mingle corner. So if, if you don't have a challenge, if you don't have a team, um, we'll s we'll just say go to the robotics corner and meet people that want to are interested in robotics, and you guys can talk about what challenges you know you might want to to partake in. Uh, so we'll do that for you know one of the each of the corners of the room. Um, and, you know, just feel free. Everyone here is really great. Um, everyone's going to be really friendly. Just introduce yourself. Say hi. Like, oh, yeah, I think robots are awesome. And if you're um, feeling extra shy, come find one of us and we'll find you a screen. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you for coming. And uh, we're excited to, be, to have you all here. And let's get started. We'll be, uh, <laughs> we'll be switching back for the folks watching at home on the live stream. We will be back on uh, about 12.15 uh, for the public festival portion uh, beginning. Thanks very much.